AEW has aired footage of the fight between CM Punk and Jack Perry from All Out 2023. We're going to take a look at some of the stills and, and big moments from this altercation that AEW aired. I'm going to contextualize it with what the Young Buck said and tell you how AEW is going to work this into a story and also talk about, of course, what this makes CM Punk look like. Is it good for him? Is it bad for him? Is it really nothing? Well, it's a little bit all three. Anyway, before I get into any of that, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Okay, so we were promised that the footage of the backstage altercation between CM Punk and Jack Ferry, one, uh, Perry, excuse me, one of the two incidents that allegedly took place, well, now we know this incident took place, confirmed, but one of two alleged incidents from that event this one, as well as the alleged altercation between CM Punk and Tony Khan, which uh, combined together got CM Punk fired from AEW just a few days later. So we had we had heard that they were going to air this. Tony Khan, apparently, if you believe some of these reports, had said that he was swayed by some of the comments that had been made, not only by CM Punk, but also WWE in recent days, essentially burying the company, some of their policies and talent as well. So they decided to air this footage and basically they did this as a way to both build the storyline between FTR and the Young Bucks at AEW Dynasty and also, you know, Show people what happened here and, and one of the key reasons why Punk is no longer with the company. Um, I'll get into the Young Bucks promo beforehand, but let's just take a look at some of these uh, stills. Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Okay, so as you can see here, the first still shows CM Punk with the three X's on his shirt confronting Jack Perry after his match. Um, oh. We're moving a bit too fast here, aren't we? Uh, but he obviously was very unhappy with Jack Perry's line of, you know, rail glass and all that. But it quickly devolved into, you know, something that was not great. These two would go face to face. You could see that they were just talking for a bit. And that was the interesting thing. They were just talking for a bit. And then we get to the moment where CM Punk pushes Jack Perry aggressively in the middle of their conversation and then puts him into a guillotine chokehold, as CM Punk put it on the Aro Hawani show last week. I just choked him a little bit before being broken up by multiple people backstage, including the likes of Hook, including the likes of Samoa Joe, who were holding back Jack Perry, and uh, I believe it was Chris Hero and Sanjay Dutt who helped break up CM Punk's end of it. Both men were very aggressive and agitated after the fact, and uh, it was it was not a great moment, honestly, uh, for anyone, but, you know, for everyone out there, because there had been a lot of rumors out there about what happened, how it happened, what led to this, and now we have the footage of one of these key incidents, right? And I think right now, what a lot of people are taking away from this is, well, this is exactly what CM Punk said. This is exactly what he said. And, you know, he said that, ah, I just choked him out a little bit. And there are people who are trying to minimize the the result of that, right? Okay. CM Punk said that he choked him out a little bit. This video confirms it. Why should we care? Number one, aside from the storyline reason that we'll get into in a, in a minute, number one, CM Punk has claimed that throughout his entire time in, in AEW, he was professional. He even said this on the Ariel Hawani show. CM Punk and his camp have put out reports stating that every, nearly every single incident that he has been involved in has basically not been his fault. And this confirms the thing that, you know, had been debated. Who was the aggressor in this fight? And that is something that, you know... Many fans are very conveniently ignoring because there was a question like, ah, oh, well, Jack Perry had to have started it. You know, Jack Perry had to have started it. Um, or the ridiculous insinuation that somehow fighting your coworkers backstage, whether it's CM Punk, whether it's Sammy Guevara, whether it's Andrade, Eddie Kingston, whoever, 
is something that, you know, just happens in wrestling. To me, that is a bullshit talking point. Plain and simple. You work with someone. You work it out or you ignore it. And if they take like action like Jack Perry did and call you out on national TV, and just like CM Punk did to Hangman Page and vice versa, if you do that, then you either need to take it up with the management, which I will admit, and I've said before, was not in place. The systems were not in place in AEW. Or you handle things legally through your lawyer. There are professional, proper channels, regardless of the situation, to handle it. To claim that throughout this entire process that Punk was not the aggressor in the fight. I'm not saying in the beef. Well, in the beef, well, that, that's a whole different video. But in this specific fight, it was very clear that they were talking. What Jack Perry may have said, we don't know. Reports are out there that whatever he was saying was not inf inflammatory to the point where it would warrant this aggressive and unprofessional response from Punk. And, you know, it is what it is. Now, is this the, the, is this the Zapruder film that everyone wanted it to be? Is this going to be the thing that proves CM Punk should be fired? Well, to the public, no. Because this has been something that has been built up for months. This has been something that people have, you know, almost made larger than life in their minds. That no matter what the result was, they were going to be a little disappointed. And that's fine. That's wrestling. That's what we do. But to claim that this does not make Punk look bad, in my opinion, and in my view, as someone who has long time been a Punk fan, as someone who literally, like, people want to say, look, you, you just hate CM Punk. There's going to be a lot of people in the comment section saying that. You just hate CM Punk. Brothers, sisters, and everyone else, I flew out to Chicago for Survivor Series on the whim that one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, CM Punk, was going to return to WWE. I didn't have to go. I didn't get meaty. I none. Of, I flew out on my own dime because I wanted to potentially witness one of my favorite wrestlers to this day of all time, CM Punk, a person who I credit for getting me back into pro wrestling in 2011. I wanted to see him return. And maybe it's the profound disappointment that someone who I had always like admired as, as a wrestler, obviously, you know, doesn't look good in this situation. And remember, this is not the only situation that Punk found himself at the center of. He found himself at the center of the brawl in incident. He found himself at the center of the the controversies of kicking people out backstage a collision, leaking stuff backstage uh, to to outlets about Jack Perry. All of the stuff that we know. And now we have evidence that he looks like the aggressor here. And that's not damning CM Punk. But when you take this into account and you look at the fact that a independent group, an independent committee looked at this and assuming other film uh, that involved him and Tony Khan, where he allegedly, again, lunged at Tony Khan. Back they looked at this and they said, man, we got to fire him including Punk's longtime friend, Brian Danielson. It calls a lot of things into question. And again, this is just a small piece of stuff that we already know. And people ask me to break it down. I broke it down. I know it sounds silly. I know it sounds stupid. I know it's like, why the hell are we still talking about this? But it is what it is. This is the video we got. And this is the, these are, I should say, the times we live in. <laughs> so there it is. As far as what happened on the show, we have the Young Bucks, who actually had a promo before this, kind of discussing everything that had happened and, and discussing and contextualizing this in, in terms of the story that they were telling. So we have the Young Bucks, who um, basically said that there was a fight between, or an incident, I should say, between Jack Perry, the scapegoat, who they've mentioned on TV, and another individual. 
And we had um, Nick Jackson say, quote, the other individual tried to make the show all about them and happens to be good friends with FTR. And through this promo, they were building up the, the friendship of this individual, CM Punk, and FTR. And this was used as a way to build up their match at Dynasty for the uh, tag team titles. And the Bucks said and claimed that this incident and the fallout of it and, and, and you know, the, the hoopla, hullabaloo, all that stuff distracted them in their match against FTR. And that is why they lost in, in kayfabe. And that is why they refused to shake FTR's hand in kayfabe. So they play the footage. And then afterwards, we get FTR coming out to the ring and basically playing the other side of this. And, and look, I should AEW have played this footage? I still think they shouldn't have. Personally, I don't think they shouldn't have. I, I think, you know, it just for two reasons. Number one, like I said before, it's not going to live up to the hype of, of what people expect it to be. And number two. And more importantly, I don't think you need this to sell people more on, on an FTR uh, Young Bucks feud. How much more are people going to be interested in that match, really? Does it make it a little bit more interesting for some of the insiders? Maybe. But for the regular fans, I mean, maybe it riles them up a bit. Maybe the hardcore fans who do buy the pay-per-view, 100,000 of them do. Maybe it riles them up a lot. But I don't think you needed to any more than you already have. So... To me, I, I still don't see the the storyline reason to to do it, but they did. FTR comes out and they talk about you know how this is BS, how we're still focusing on incidents that happened eight months ago, yet we are here. AEW is here in the midst of one of the greatest runs in the company's history, which honestly <laughs> speaks more to me. And, and how I view, you know, this entire thing. I don't want to stop talking about punk. I genuinely do. I don't like, like, it distracts from the fact that AEW is having some of the best television, some of the best wrestling, some of the best, like, content that they've put out ever over the past few months. And we're sitting here and we're still talking about punk. And you know what? That's what they spoke to. And they said that, you know, you want to bring this up. It's not going to distract us. It's on. So at Dynasty, it's FTR, Young Bucks. Again, I, I think this was, I'm not going to say like, oh my God, this has buried the company. They're WCW. This was definitely a WCW 2000 move, but it was also a WWE move from the 90s. Because this is def this is something that WWE would have done and, ha and they've done similar things. Like there is this narrative that WWE would never do something like this. Yet we had those billionaire Ted promos. Yet we had those promos uh, in that Ultimate Warrior documentary. Yet we had Vince McMahon call CM Punk antisocial. He didn't get along with people in that Austin interview from 2014. We had all of this stuff. The, the WWE has, or WWF, WWE, whatever you want to call it, had done. To say they wouldn't have done it or they haven't done it before. I mean, come on. That, that's just... To me, that's proving that you either don't know, and that's just fine, people don't know, or that you were completely ignoring history. But again, people are gonna, I'm sure the comment section is gonna be lovely in this, but let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Also, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Until next time, keep it real.